oceans are the life support system of this entire planet. And all creatures that exist on this planet rely on oceans for their very existence. And without healthy oceans and the systems that they control, systems like climate, life as we know it could not exist. We get so much from the ocean in terms of our fisheries, in terms of recreation, in terms of marine trades, industries. And our maritime industry is vital to growing our economy. It creates good, well-paying jobs that lead to careers right here in the United States. Seafood and the seafood industry is our number one uh, private sector jobs creator for our state, allowing for our families to continue a lifestyle and a work that many have done for generations and generations. Fisheries provide a, a primary, or in some cases, their only source of protein for upwards of a billion people around the world today. But the closer you get to it, if you're a fisherman, if you're a scientist, the more you see the changes that are taking place. We have already lost 25% of global coral reefs. Large ocean fish have declined by up to 90%. We are facing the collapse of all sorts of fisheries around the world. If you lose a major source of food to people in places like the Middle East or Africa or Indonesia, then you introduce instability into regions where we need stability. Look at Somalia, for instance. The artisanal fishing industry in Somalia fed their local people for generations. Then all of a sudden, those fisheries were overexploited, they were depleted, and what happened? One byproduct of it is that some of the local people resorted to piracy. It's now a, an extraordinary problem. Already, we are paying the price for our negligence and criminal destruction of the oceans. And it's only going to get worse if we don't take action now. And the United States has an opportunity and a responsibility to take a leadership role in this world. If you add up all our atolls and our uh, Hawaiian Islands, Puerto Rico, so on, you end up with these 200-mile uh, jurisdictions that give us more responsibility than any other country in the world. And uh, that's why Congress needs to take bold action. We need a third of the Congress committed to oceans conservation, and we need the Democrats and the Republicans working together. The same way ICCF has brought together Democrats and Republicans to work on good international conservation policies. But the solution shouldn't be just more federal regulations. There need to be public-private partnerships. One of the most promising things in our field right now is a partnership that we've created between GEF, WWF, the FAO, and the leading uh, industry players through the ISSF, where we've come together to look at the issue of tuna. It's a global fishery. They span the entire breadth of the oceans, and the stocks have been incredibly healthy. But over the last five or six years, we, we noticed that catches were starting to tap out. And the more we talked to scientists, we realized that our global fisheries are starting to reach maximum sustainable yield. 60% of all the tuna fisheries have been uh, depleted. So it's in the interest of, of both industry as well as those that benefit from this resource to actually introduce some elements of sustainability. While there are management regimes technically in place to manage the global tuna fisheries, they're largely ineffective. Governments are most effective when it's a national fishery where they control all aspects. But in global fisheries, it's going to require market-based efforts for us to achieve any tangible results. So through GEF funding and through our partnership, we have come together to send signals that we won't buy tuna unless there's a barcode on every fish, a barcode on every boat, and you can track the fishing practices that landed that fish and delivered it to our table. And those are the kind of signals we need to send if we're going to save the oceans and save the tuna and save the fish in the sea. As long as the U.S. maintains its leadership role and maintains a strong global presence in terms of pushing an agenda for you know, science-based environmental actions, 
I think that ultimately brings the rest of the world along because at the end of the day, we still represent the major market and that gives us clout when we go out and try to drive policy. If we unleash the marketplace, we can find long-term solutions to utilize resources so that people can feed themselves, build their economies, create regional stability, but at the same time do so in a way that protects their natural heritage. You know, most of us fell in love with the ocean because of its beauty. Whether it was going to the beach, slipping under the waves, seeing coral reefs and fish and all the amazing wonders that it presents. But we are in danger of losing something that's fundamental to life on Earth. Whether it's source of food, source of stability, stabilizing climate around the world, the ocean plays a fundamental role in our future and it's time that we woke up and saw that and took steps to save these oceans before it's too late.